Hey, my friends, it's Tom with Watching River. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you're well. It's another good day the Lord has made for us, and we will rejoice and be glad in it as we await this pre-tribulation rapture of the church, which I believe could happen any day. I'm looking up every day, and my eyes are on Jesus. Um, you know, big trouble for Israel, but, you know, what else is new? There's always big trouble for Israel, no matter what they do, but we'll talk about that I got a lot of stuff to cover. I don't have time for snack recommendations today. I'm sorry to say. If I did, though, it would be the dream of a five-year-old, a bologna sandwich and an apple juice, which I happen to still like at 61 years old. But, you know, I don't have time for this. <laughs> Let's go to scripture. I want to read Psalm 96. Okay, I love this psalm. It's so beautiful. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Oh, bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Man, what a beautiful psalm that is. Oh, I could read that again. Just beautiful. All right, so yeah, Israel. You know, big trouble for Israel. You know, we know tomorrow, we talked about this yesterday. Tomorrow they're doing their ring around the, the Temple Mount. They're going to hold hands and they're kind of trying to, they're almost announcing they're going to take it back soon from Arab control. That's the, the feel of it. And that really is going to have the, you know, the entire Muslim world is going to flip out over that. That's happening tomorrow. Well, you know, no matter what they do, it just always feels like it's big trouble for Israel. And last night, they uh, bombed a, a school and there were, you know, civilian casualties, which is always horrible, you know. But when you have a terrorist group who hides within those schools, you know, you end up with just a total mess. And that's what happened. I'm going to read a telegram post right from the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces. A short while ago, directed by the IDF and the ISA intelligence, the IAF precisely struck Hamas terrorists operating within a Hamas command and control center embedded in the Al Tabin school and located adjacent to a mosque in Daraj Tufa, which serves as a shelter for the residents of Gaza City. The command and control center served as a hideout for Hamas terrorists and commanders from which various attacks were planned and advanced against IDF troops and the state of Israel. Prior to the strike, numerous steps were taken to mitigate the risk of harming civilians, including the use of precise munitions, aerial surveillance, and intelligence information. The Hamas terrorist organization systematically violates international law and operates from within civilian shelters, brutally exploiting the civilian population and institutions as human shields for their terror activities. You know, how many times have we have been around this block? This is not our first time around the block. This is the pattern of every time this happens, this is the pattern. It's the mainstream media says Israel bombed a school. They never mention terrorists are operating from the school. They never mention there's a command and control center in there. They say Israel bombed a school. There are many dead women and children, many dead civilians. Everyone gets that narrative and the, the hatred rises up. And then 
A few weeks later, after the IDF says the first day, it was a command and control center. There was, like this attack last night, there was over 20 terrorists killed in there. What are 20 terrorists doing in a school? We know. We know what they're doing. So the mainstream media runs with that narrative. And then what happens? A few weeks later, they say, oh, yeah. And they say it quietly because the narrative's out there already. And the hatred has already increased. And then they say, oh, yeah, it was a command and control center. And there were some terrorists killed there. Quietly. You know, this is just where, you know, you can only take so many strolls around the block before you you start memorizing the scenery. Right? I mean, it's just it's just another one of those attacks. And you know what? And I... I hate war. I always tell you that. And, and any dead civilians. I saw horrifying footage of this, by the way. Just horrifying footage. Uh, the Palestinians are claiming that 100 were dead in the strike last night. And uh, the IDF is saying that Hamas is exaggerating the death toll in the strike. And they say at least 20 wanted terrorists were destroyed in that attack. You know, why are they operating out of a school? Because that's the only place they feel safe and they obviously don't care about their own civilians because who would do that who would, would you do that would you put yourself in harm in put civilians in harm's way to protect yourself in a war zone i hope we wouldn't do that i know i wouldn't do that but they do that that's how they do it uh bubba news on telegram had great commentary about this he said this story will be huge the idf hit a school in gaza overnight early this morning there was more than just a this was more than just a school it was a Hamas command and control center embedded in the school however this location also served as a shelter for displaced residents of Gaza City and then he said I've seen the videos they're very graphic yes they are very graphic he said this will go to the UN and the hatred on Israel will explode in growth globally more countries will join in the case against Israel for performing supposed genocide. There might be no ceasefire deal deal coming after all. They've been talking about that, you know, for a while. Or this is Israel trying to force Hamas to give up the hostages with this final round of talks. I'm just not sure this will push Sinwar any closer to agreeing to releasing any hostages that are still alive. You're right, Baba. If there are any alive, we don't even know. We don't even know. And then a little later, a report comes out, according to the Palestinians, that Sheikh Mohammed Abu Sada, the head of the Hamas walk in Gaza, was killed in the attack in that school. So they're admitting, the Palestinians are admit, admitting that the head of Hamas uh, walk in Gaza was killed in this strike. So what? why is he at a school? You know, why? why was he there? because there was a command and control center there. Incredible. Incredible. But we've seen this so many times. We have just seen this and seen this and seen this and we're in the very last days. I just, I'm looking at the news this morning going like, man, we're there, we're waiting, we're there. Nothing has to happen. We're waiting for Jesus to come back for his father to say, son, go get your bride. We're waiting. We're there. What else? This is um, Amir Sarfati, said senior Hamas commander in Lebanon. Samir Momad El Haj. Uh, he operated. He was he was eliminated. He operated as the military forces commander commander located in Lebanon in Sidon and was responsible for the recruitment and training of terrorists to attack the state of Israel. They got him yesterday. He said, we will continue operating to eliminate the threat of Hamas, no matter what area the terrorist organization operates in. So there you go. They got him yesterday. This was before the, the attack. We're still waiting for the attack on Israel. You know, they're still talking about it. I'm wondering, will it be Tuesday, Wednesday, 9th of Av? Could be could be i don't know we'll see bubba news said this on telegram he said <laughs> which kind of the first line made me smile because it's so true but he said they've been telling us for 168 hours now that the iranian attack is expected in the next 24 to 48 hours and here we are a week later ninth of av is still a possibility i guess however if they do this and target the 12th and 13th time frame They'll thwart whatever ceasefire plans they have planned coming up on Thursday, August 15th. 
Yeah, because Tuesday and Wednesday is the 12th and 13th, right? And then Thursday, they have a powwow going on where they were going to discuss a ceasefire. Now, with what happened at the school last night, um, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I know one thing. We're in the very last days. Um, Bubba also, I'm reading part of a post. He did a long post. I'm reading the part that really was fascinating to me the most. He says, around... Um, this is, yes. He said, but who knows? This is part of his post. But who knows? Iran announced to the world that they'll be attacking Israel during Tisha B'Av, which is sunset August 12th until sunset August 13th. But that being said, it really feels like the world powers and the powers that be have these wars and attacks all scripted somehow with a timeline, etc. I, I completely believe that. We are watching a show. I really believe that. Yet we know that it is God that is directing it all. Right into prophecy. It's all beginning to come to pass. The next few days and weeks are going to be very exciting because I don't believe we'll be here much longer to see the full Psalm 83 war unfold. I have a feeling we'll be watching it from the mezzanine above. Maranatha, we're getting so close, y'all. I, I agree. I think, we're, I think we're very, very close. Could be wrong could be wrong. God didn't whisper it in my ear and he's in control and he's a sovereign, perfect God and Jesus is coming in his perfect time. So I don't want to say, you know, oh, it's definitely going to happen in the next, you know, I, I'm not like that. I'm just, you know, it really, it looks like the perfect storm of prophetic events right now. I've never seen a storm like this. It, for it to not be this time period, to me, it feels like it would be, you know, you're in a, you're in a dark, cloudy area and the thunder is rumbling and the rain hasn't started and the clouds are black and you're like, we're about to get slammed with a storm. But you know what? I've been in those situations where all of a sudden the, you don't get slammed by the storm. But so it, maybe it's not. Where our, our eyes are on Jesus. But it looks like right now there are dark clouds and rumbling and I've never seen it like this ever. What else? What's this one? Do I want to read this one? No, I'm going to skip that one. All right. This is uh, for Israel today. He said, there's a dispute in Iran over a retaliatory strike on Israel. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard insists on attacking Tel Aviv. The Iranian president, that new president, is against it. The Telegraph reports the president and representative of the moderate camp in Iran believe that the Revolutionary Guard is trying to undermine him. They think it is easy to attack Israel, said one of his advisors. The Iranian president proposes attacking Israeli targets in neighboring countries, but the Revolutionary Guard is not enthusiastic about this. The only consideration is whether to join Hezbollah once they attack Israel from Lebanon. Let's see what goes on there. This is from Amir Sarfati. shared this on his telegram. Just He shared a picture too. 500 students at the University of Sydney, Australia, held a general meeting yesterday to pass a motion supporting Hamas as an armed resistance against Israel. They explicitly voted down a motion condemning October 7th and labeling Hamas a terror group. And he said, he said genocidal lunatics. I say the world is ready for the seven year tribulation. You know, they don't realize it, but the world is ready you know, I saw things this morning that were so, I can't even, I can't even almost describe it without crossing lines. Just so graphic. Violence that was so graphic. This is one of the things I saw he talked about after this. Amir talked about this. He said, not Gaza, not important, not Palestinians, doesn't count. As he shared a very graphic video from Bangladesh. And he said, Bangladesh Muslims are slaughtering Bengali Hindus like sheep. No Western progressive opens his mouth or tweets. They're being totally silent. And I have seen, seen things there in the last couple days that are as bad as the thought, stuff I saw on October 7th. You know, the video I saw there. Not a word. Nobody's talking about it. Just slaughtering them in the streets, breaking into houses, just slaughtering entire families, kids. Not a word. Not a word. This is, I got to do one more from Bubba News because he hit on this last night. Very interesting. He said, more of the mainstream media is talking about the red heifers again. 
This is only going to stir up the anger in the Arab world surrounding Israel and how. While this is all prophecy playing out in the initial stages, it's all setting up for God's plan kicking into motion daily. The everlasting enmity or, or eternal hatred between Israel's Arab enemies and Israel itself. Ezekiel 25, 15 through 17. Hamas has called the red heifers as an act of aggression because they know it will ignite the rebuilding of the third temple. Hamas and others know that Israel wants to end Arab control on the Temple Mount where their Al-Aqsa Mosque is located. In 1921, the chief rabbinate of Jerusalem officially banned Jews from entering the Temple Mount. It ruled that Jews are forbidden to enter the Temple Mount unless it is ritually clean. However, the Jews cannot make the Temple Mount ritually clean without the ashes of a red heifer. There's no official plan to do this right away, it seems. Quote, there is no plan right now for using a kosher red heifer, killing it and turning it into ashes. Yitzhak Ruven, the director of international development for the Temple Institute, said, we will only do this when the time is right. Because there is no point in doing it if the Jewish and rabbinic uh, world won't accept it. And then this is what Bubba said. It's the most important thing. Because this is what I thought as I was reading it. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. And then he spells it out in the last paragraph. Are they waiting for one man to rise to the scene? To take control and unite the Jewish and rabbinic world? To support and confirm a covenant with Israel? That's exactly what they're waiting for. We are so close, guys. We're so close. Because people will say, well, who cares about these red heifers? It's not a, and I've always said it's not about the red heifers. It's understanding how close Israel is to building the third temple. Well, why does that matter, Tom? It's animal sacrifice. It doesn't matter for us. If you belong to Jesus, we're gone. But it just shows that during the seven-year tribulation, we know the Antichrist is going to enter into the temple at the three-and-a-half-year mark, stop the sacrificing, and say, worship me. So we know there's a temple there. And right now, there's no third temple there. So it's just showing we're getting very close to the temple. And people will say, well, the temple has to be first. That's nowhere in scripture. All we know is he enters in at the three and a half year mark. So we could be raptured. Let's say we were raptured today. They could build the temple in two years from now. All we know is that the three and a half year mark, he stops the sacrificing. The sacrificing might have started a month before that. I'm just showing like it doesn't, we don't need to see anything more than that. But that's why we talk about the red heifers. It's nothing to do with salvation or it's a, you know, the only way to salvation is Jesus and his blood and his finished work on the cross. But this just caught, it's just fascinating. You know what else was fascinating? And very, very sad. This plane, I don't know if you saw the video in Brazil yesterday, a plane crashed and there were 62 people on board. They all perished. And it fell out of the sky like a stone. Like it was real. I've never seen anything like it. It was just coming just straight down, you know. I mean, the second I saw it hit, I was just like, Lord, I hope those people knew you. It was tragic, and I just pray for those families. I can't imagine. 62 people. What else? The last 24 hours, they're saying that 22, they, We've. I, I swear we've done this story in different times. I, I'm not exaggerating. In the 28 months I've been doing this, I bet you I've said this 15 times, okay? 22 Chinese military aircraft breach Taiwan's air defense zone. Taiwan's defense ministry reported citing 28 Chinese military aircraft and 10 naval vessels. 22 of the planes crossed into Taiwan's air defense identification zone in the last 24 hour period. So there you go. How many times have we, at some point they're gonna go in. Do I think it's going to be soon? I kind of do, but I think the rapture soon because I don't think they're going to wait for the U.S. election. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just my gut feeling. Also, this Kursk thing is still happening in, in Russia. Um, Kursk map shows Ukraine advance inside of Russia. Really bad stuff going on there. Pray for our brothers and sisters there. Ukraine continues to make gains in Russia's Kursk region, according to reports as the latest maps show the state of play during Kiev's surprise incursion, which Moscow is struggling to contain. Um, pray for those people. We have so many brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Russia that just, you know, some of them are in touch with me because, uh, because of Brother Staz, the one who translates these videos into Russian 
and puts them up. I guess I'm, I'm seeing a lot of comments from Russian people saying, where is Staz? Where is he? We're not getting the translations. I think he's pretty sick right now with a kidney infection, so we need to pray for him. So right now, I don't think these videos are getting to those people. Um, um, I've, I've seen other Russian channels that share these videos, but I don't know the links for them. And, um, you know, just pray for Staz. Pray for Brother Staz. 6.5 earthquake in the Sea of Okhotsk, Russia. This was yesterday or earlier this morning. In the last 24 hours, there have been 42 earthquakes over 4.0, 10 of which were over 5.0, and one over 6.0. There you go. This is from the Telegraph in the UK. It's just what's going on in the UK with free speech is, is quite unbelievable. I have to say again, they're getting ready for the seven-year tribulation. So I told you yesterday they arrested the 55, 56-year-old woman because of a post she made. She said the guy's name wrong. She wrote the guy's name wrong or something. They arrested her. And then once they arrest you, they grab your phone and they there's no privacy. They go through the entire thing. And if they find anything that they deem as hate speech, it's added to your charges. And the Telegraph said that this is the headline. You will be refused bail even if you only watched riots from the sidelines, a judge warns. Whether active participant or curious observer, anybody involved in disorder will be locked up, the Belfast court is said, said yesterday. Can you imagine? That's like Venezuela. That's North Korea. You can't go to a protest peacefully because if anyone in the front lines, if they deem it, this is not a good protest, we're getting you. We can get you. They even said they could go overseas and get Americans yesterday. They announced that. You know, another guy sentenced to 20 months in prison for a social media post in the UK. They're saying UK is the new North Korea. This boggles my mind. It really does. Boggles my mind. Who votes for these people? Or do people vote for these people? Who's running the show? I know who's running my show. Jesus Christ. The only begotten son of God. He's the only one I care about. I, I live for an audience of one. Okay, AI models. This is probably Clown World, so we should get the effect ready, okay? Got it. <laughs> this is from Live Science. AI models trained on AI-generated data could spiral into unintelligible nonsense, scientists warn. <laughs> but we're all in. <laughs> Let's do it. Imagine taking a picture, scanning it, then printing it out, and then repeating this process. Throughout this process, the scanner and printer will introduce errors over time, distorting the image. Um, similar things happen in machine learning. Models learning from the other models, they absorb their errors and they introduce their own over time, breaking model utility. But we're all in. <laughs> it's like, but let's continue with the plan because AI is, it's the future. Really, it's a lot of money, but it's the future and we're going all in. <laughs> it's just, I'm sorry, it's just clown world. You know, just, Lord, take us out of here. We're ready. You guys ready? I saw that. All right. Let's do a few comments of the day, okay? Here we go. Robert, can you imagine blinking and then opening your eyes and you're in the front of Jesus? He's coming. Man, I can imagine. I can't. I'm. I'm actually rather excited about it. Blinking your eyes, opening them, and you're in front of Jesus. That's how fast it may be. Wow. This is from the only taco. Take your seat, peeps. We'll be putting on our. We'll be putting on our seatbelts soon. I love that. Thank you, Penny. I just feel like praising the Lord today. We, as His children, are sitting here watching all this news weather and rumors of war yes there is a lot of sadness in this world yes there are people suffering and that's why we pray but our lord and savior is still on his throne and his promise is real thank you lord for saving our souls may the lord bless you and keep you all i love you all so much thank you penny beautiful heather if those eligible red heifers time out meaning they expire don't dismay 
Our God is a God of miracles, and when the time is right, you better believe a red heifer will manifest in one way or another. You're right about that, Heather. You're right. Michelle, every day gets darker and darker. It seems so odd that I am at complete peace. I used to worry about everything. There is such comfort in the word of God. I am so thankful that he left us an instruction manual to guide us through these dark days. Amen, sister. My husband can't watch the news because he is stressing about the future. He is unsaved. He cannot understand how it does not bother me. If only he would pick up a Bible. Oh, the peace that he would have. Yeah. I can't understand anyone who... Oh, man. And they'll even say to us, you know, you're so peaceful about all this stuff. Why aren't you worried? It's like, look, the Bible gave us tomorrow's news today. We don't worry. We don't worry. But you know what? It's, all we can do is pray for the lost ones and share the gospel. Tell them what happened 2,000 years ago. Because a miraculous event happened. It was so miraculous and it was so loving. I always call it the greatest love story of all time. The rescue of mankind from their sin by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Jesus. Now this is the one they say, you know, I don't want to believe in a God that would send me to hell. It's like you're talking to the one who laid his life down for you. I used a, a restaurant analogy the other day. I said it would be like, you know, you have the greatest meal of your life, the greatest meal of your life, and you go up to pay for it, and they're like, it's already been paid for. You're like, what do you mean? That guy over there paid for it. Well, I, I, I can't accept that payment. I don't want that. Pay Look, hold on. Let me grab my wallet. You open your wallet. There's nothing in there. You have no way to pay. You have no way to pay. So do you humble yourself and say to that man, thank you so much for paying for that for me. How kind of you, how generous. Or do you say, I refuse his payment. Get that away from me. I'll take my chances. And they say, well, we have to call the authorities now. And you're like, well, that's okay. You know, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of a goofy analogy, but you know what? It's true. Like Jesus paid for your sins with his blood. And you're either going to say, I, I believe in the power of that blood that it'll wash me white as snow. I believe in his finished work. I want to spend eternity in paradise. Or you say like, eh, I don't want that payment. I don't need that. I'll, I'll, I'll try to work my way to God instead. You can't. Your currency is no good. My pastor told a great story one day. He, he said, he said, picture having $10,000 credit card debt. So you call your credit card company and they're like, you owe $10,000 and you got to make that payment by the 30th of this month. And you're like, look, I don't have the money, but I make the best banana bread. It is just the best. But so I'm going to send you 10 loaves of banana bread. And they're like, we don't accept banana bread as a payment. Oh, well, I'm going to send them. Well, you're still going to owe the 10 grand because we don't accept that payment. That's our works with, in, in, with God. Our works don't save us. Jesus saved us with his blood. Jesus saved us with his blood. And all you have to say is, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. You have to admit you're a sinner. You have to understand I need payment for my sins. If you don't think you're a sinner, why would you need payment for them? But we're all sinners. You say to Jesus, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know I am. I know I need payment for these sins. And I believe that your blood is so powerful that you shed that it will wash me white as snow. It will remove my sins from me. It will give me a clean slate. I'm believing in that blood to get rid of these sins. And then you say to Jesus, I believe you came here from heaven and lived a perfect life. I believe you went to the cross and shed that precious blood. And I believe you died and you were buried and you resurrected on the third day. Jesus, I need a savior. I now see that you are the savior of the world. And I'm putting my belief and trust in your blood and in your finished work. When you do that, no matter what anyone says, you're saved. You're saved. Now, people will try to judge the meter of your heart. Well, how much did you believe that? How? You know what? That's between God and the person. God knows your heart. But if you're saying to Jesus sincerely, I believe in the power of your blood that it rescued me. And I believe in your finished work on the cross. You're saved. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You will be born again. You will be rapture ready. You won't face what's about to hit this world very, very soon. 
That seven year horrific tribulation, you won't be here for that. You'll be in the arms of Jesus. You'll be with a huge family face to face with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords forever, forever in a new body. But if you hear this gospel that I just shared, this good news that your sins have been paid for by the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God, Jesus, and you say, I don't want to believe that. That's really, it's a fairy tale. It doesn't change the situation you're in. We're all born heading to hell and Jesus rescued us. So are you going to turn and acknowledge the rescue? Or are you going to say, I don't want that. I don't need that. If that's the case until you take your last breath, you're going to face Jesus on judgment day. You will be kneeling before him knowing I'm in the presence of God and my sins are still with me. And he'll say away from me. I never knew you. And you will be led off to eternal separation from God, also known as hell, which is terrifying. And you won't say you're unfair. You won't say you're unjust. You'll say, you paid for my sins. I heard that you paid for my sins. And I said, I won't even look into this. I won't even open a Bible and look into it. Because I always challenge you guys who don't believe. Just, you know, do it just to say, Tom, I did it. You were wrong. You know, just say to Jesus, I don't believe in you. If you're real, reveal yourself to me and open a Bible. Maybe go to the book of John and just start reading. But say it before you open it. Jesus, I don't believe in you. If you're real, reveal yourself to me. Worst case scenario, scenario you could waste a half hour of your life. But it's the most important decision of your entire life. Don't let it slip by. Making no choice for Jesus is making a choice for eternal separation from him choose Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. Today. I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and you know what? Today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow for the prayer video. I love you guys.